tonight. SpaceX finally takes flight. Xiaomi comes to the U.S., sort of. And another rashy Fitbit. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 274 for Thursday, February 12th, 2015. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by NatureBox. NatureBox ships great tasting snacks right to your door. Start snacking smarter with wholesome, delicious treats like strawberry Greek yogurt pretzels. To get your complimentary NatureBox sampler, visit naturebox.com slash twit. That's naturebox.com slash twit. Now let's get right to the news. Elon Musk's SpaceX finally launched the reusable Falcon 9 rocket last night. The rockets carried NASA's $340 million Deep Space Climate Observatory. Joining us to talk about this and other stories is Ian Thompson from The Register. Thanks for joining us, Ian. Always a pleasure. So tell us uh, how many times these launches were scrapped and and what happened uh. today, last night. Yeah, well, Sunday the radar went down on the site, so they had to scrub the launch then. And then they had very high winds in the higher levels of the atmosphere that scrubbed the launches, uh, another, uh, uh, held the launch right back until yesterday, in fact. Um, and even then, it wasn't ideal circumstances because they had to abandon an attempt to land the rocket because of very heavy seas out off the Florida coast. Um, so the ret retrieval barge, just read the instructions, couldn't be safely landed on. As, by the reports I was getting, they got 50-foot waves breaking over the top of it. So um, that had to go out. But less a, less a perfect launch from SpaceX. All went as planned. It's their first uh, mission where they managed to put the satellite out into beyond low Earth orbit. Um, and it's a, very, it's a crucial launch for the company. Um, it really does mean that they're now pretty much ready for anything in the rocketry field. Yeah, you went quickly through the the barge was called just read the instructions, right? So those super those non super nerds out there, what what was that named after? Oh, uh, okay. This is a personal personal god of mine, Ian Banks, um, the Scottish science fiction author, who thought up some marvelous names for the ships in the various books that he had, like Ultimate Ship the Second or um, some in fact, which are rather too rude to put on air. But um, I would highly recommend Ian Banks's Culture series, and Elon Musk is a huge fan, which is why he started to. Uh, to name his space his, his space facilities after in the, after ships names that uh, Ian Banks either used or probably would have approved of mm -hmm. so what is this satellite meant to do um, well the satellite actually is a bit outdated it was originally envisioned by Al Gore in 1998 uh, to monitor solar winds and that's what it's going to do, but it's been in storage for the last 10 years for budgetary and political reasons. Um, what it'll do is sit about a million miles away from the Earth, between us and the Sun, being held in position by the twin gravitational attractions of the Sun and the Earth. And it'll give us warning if there's a solar storm heading our way. Um, typically, depending on its on its position and the, the Earth's position, about 15 to 60 minutes warning, which may not sound like much when you've got a massive solar storm coming in, but it would be enough to pull some breaker switches, you know, get some of the electrical grid down and protected, buy guns and food if it's a really serious one, you know. Mm -hmm. So as long as we're talking about SpaceX and Elon Musk, um, I have to talk about Tesla. Musk yesterday told investors that his company could be worth $700 billion by 2025. What do you think about that? I think the key phrase there is could be. Um, you know, I mean, it's very, very dangerous to, 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 to underestimate Musk, but he is also a master of hyperbole. Um, the, the could be, I think, is it's obviously going to be big. Um, he does seem to have a viable business model for Tesla. Uh, he's got some decent cars out there. The solar grid is going up. Uh, I've got friends in the UK who've just invested in their first Tesla S, and he's hugely popular in other in other European countries. So I don't think it's worth writing him off. Uh, the big the big problem is China. He's had a lousy last quarter in China, and it doesn't seem that the Chinese are willing to spend the kind of money he wants uh, for the Tesla S, and they're instead developing their own electric cars. So. It could be, but he's got to conquer the Chinese nation market, and that's a very difficult sell. Yeah. Well, as long as you brought up China, there was other big news today. Xiaomi announced they'd begin selling their products in the U.S., but not their phones. What are they going to be selling here? 
Uh, selling a bunch of accessories. Um, they're going to be working. Uh, they handed out um, font, uh, tablets at the uh, at the actual launch. Um, they're going to be moving into the U.S. market in a very very careful way. There are all kinds of regulatory pressures uh, that they're, go that they're going to have to jump hoop, jump through hoops on. Uh, if they want cell phones in the US, uh, not least of which uh, there's also the legal threat from Apple um, because they've they've not actually said it outright, but you've only got to look at an Apple handset and a Show Me handset and you can see there are obvious similarities between the two. And if Samsung's had to pay out a couple of billion to Apple just for, for nicking their design, then I should imagine the Chinese are going to have to pay pretty much the same, uh, if not more, considering the way they've carried on doing it. So there's that kind of, there's that problem. But also there's considerable distrust between the US and Chinese governments at the moment. And I'm not sure that they really want to get involved in that particular mud fight. Yeah. So you talked about um, they handed out the mean notes today at, an, at a press event in San Francisco. What was the event for? Was it was it really just to announce this, or was it? What was yeah, it, it was. It, it's basically a, a chance to uh, start to get to know the U.S. market. Um, ever since they poached Hugo Barra, uh, he's been very he's been t uh, been taken on to basically push the company into European and U.S. markets. So this was more of a getting to know you session. This is where we're making our first steps into the market, keep an eye on us, we are going to be doing other things. Um, I mean, Xiaomi is an enormous success within China, but it has virtually no market outside of the Middle Kingdom. So what they're going to have to do now, if they want to see, see the kind of growth they've been seeing at the moment, is woo over American buyers, woo over European buyers, um, and get hardware hardware out there and get services out there, which is where they make a lot of their money, uh, in order to sort of get those customers on board. Right. So it seems like they just want to start trying to find that love that Apple has and have <laughs> find people that I know that I talked to some people who were at the event and they were playing around with their uh, their me uh, notes. And they there was something that they showed that it could tell your age and gender just with the camera. That was the most exciting thing that I saw on Twitter. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, there's Roberto I didn't actually see that if. If so, well, I suspect there's going to be some a fair few mistakes. But at the same time, it's um, it's I mean, they've got a lot of really interesting technology. And while at the at the front they are selling hardware, there's an awful lot of software in there as well. It is a very similar model to Apple's, where they control everything all the way through the stack, and that gives that gives you a great control, b great optimization, and c just instant profit because everything comes to you. Um, I mean, the, the CEO of Xiaomi has said that he was inspired by Steve Jobs, and it certainly shows in the um, slightly "I want it all" business tactics, which uh, which Jobs so so uh, displayed so often. Right. So you had another story on the register today about how some users of the two hundred and fifty dollar Fitbit Surge are reporting sore and scabby skin after wearing the device. We've heard this before. Uh, what? What? Why? <laughs> well, basically. Um, then no one's quite sure of the reason yet. Basically, uh, Fitbit had to do a recall last year because the adhesives in one of their other uh, wristbands was causing an allergic reaction on an estimated 2% of all, of all users. Now, they're saying in this case, it's probably that the band is too tight or that there's soap causing irritation or maybe you're sweating too much. And really, you know, it's an exercise ban. What are you not going to be doing apart from sweating into the damn thing? Right, that's you know, the thing I don't understand. You sweat, and and the other thing they said was don't wear it all the time. But isn't that the point that you wear exactly. it all the time? I know the whole point is that it collects data over over a twenty four hour period. They designed it with a seven hour bat a seven day battery life. The whole point is you're supposed to strap this thing on your wrist. It's never supposed to come off. And now they're telling customers. Oh, just take it off and it'll heal up. And if it if it doesn't, and if you put it on your other wrist, you get you know rash or scabs there. Um, it seems like they're trying to avoid a recall, but there's now a government investigation into it as well. And I suspect a lot of people are going to be offered their money back. They certainly should be, because if you've bought a two hundred and fifty dollar device and are then told, well, just don't use it so often by the manufacturer, it's a bit of a slap in the face. Right. I mean, it's it's not new technology. I have a watch. I never take it off, and that you know, hasn't happened to me. So, Indeed, mine actually never needs batteries or recharging either. It's solar powered. <laughs> How so. does it work? <laughs> <laughs> you have these things called self-winders. They've been around for about 50 years, but the tech industry hasn't got onto them yet. It's still the biggest failing of smartwatches is that you've got to recharge them so often, and yeah. you've got to carry around a charger to do it usually as well. Mm -hmm. so, so, yeah, still not sold on that one.
Mm -hmm. So lastly, you have written in the past about the Saudi blogger Rafe Badawi. In 2013, he was accused of insulting Islam in Facebook posts. He also ran the online activist message board Liberal Saudi Network. Uh, what's, where does the case stand today? Uh, at the moment, he'll be examined by a doctor uh, after evening prayers in Jeddah, and if he's judged fit, he'll receive the next 50 strokes of his 1,000-stroke sentence. Uh, that goes on top of the 10-year 10 10 -year jail sentence and the uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars he's been fined. Uh, he's also banned from leaving the country once he's out of jail, which is rather insulting. Uh, he took the first 50 strokes last month, and um, since then there have been... there were anguished statements from the State Department, um, Amnesty International has got involved. Uh, it, since then, he hasn't been beaten for medical reasons. And yesterday, Prince Charles apparently had a word in the ear of the Saudi royal family about the case. Uh, apparently, Prince Charles gets on better with them because they're fellow royals rather than a mere politician trying to tell them what to do. But it, it's, a, it's a shocking case. And quite frankly, for the Saudi ambassador to stand in a Paris street saying, Je suis Charlie, and then two days later, they're flogging, they're flogging a guy who just expressed on Facebook that he was an atheist and believed in women's rights. Really, it's... <sighs> It's difficult to see how you can justify it in a civilized society. And quite frankly, the more people that protest about it, the better the chance is that he'll at least get some of his sentence reduced. All right. Well, thank you so much. You, you're, I'm sure I'll be writing about this more on the register. Thank you, Ian Thompson. We thank you. Thank you also, Megan. It's been, good. it's been good fun. It has been. Thank you. Coming up, Pinterest pairs with Apple and how to post postmortemly on Facebook. But first, this episode is brought to you by NatureBox. Right now, NatureBox is giving you a chance to get a complimentary trial box of their most popular snacks and just pay $2 for shipping. Life is hectic and it's hard to make the best snacking choices. When you're looking for a quick pick-me-up, do what I do. Get delicious, healthy snacks at naturebox.com. NatureBox has hundreds of delicious, nutritionist-approved snacks They've got zero artificial flavors, colors, or sweeteners, zero grams trans fat, and no high fructose corn syrup. You'll even find snacks with the bold flavors that you crave. So in the afternoon when you're hungry, grab cinnamon spiced almonds or sriracha pop pops or cranberry pepita crisps. You know you're going to snack. Get smart about it with NatureBox. Start your trial today and get a complimentary sampler box at naturebox.com slash twit. Stay full. Stay strong. Start snacking smarter. Go to naturebox.com slash twit. And we thank NatureBox for their support of Tech News Tonight. Now on to a few more stories we're following today. Biomedical engineering researchers have released an HIV and syphilis test that's powered by an iPhone. The device is a smartphone accessory designed for healthcare workers. It connects through the headphone jack of a smartphone, costs only $34, and offers results in 15 minutes. It's similar to devices that diabetics already use to test their blood sugar. And Valentine's Day is only a few days away, which means it's time for new relationships. We've got one rather unlikely pair making things public today. Apple and Pinterest announced a new partnership that allows users to search Pinterest for apps and download them right from Pinterest without going to the App Store. So let's say you're making a Pinterest board to help you plan your child's over-the-top fourth birthday party. You can pin recipes of impossible to make nutritious hors d'oeuvres that the kids will ignore and plans for a DIY princess playhouse that your husband will sprain his wrist trying to build. And while you're at it, you can download the new couples therapy app and you won't even have to leave Pinterest to do it. Security researcher Laxman Mathaya published a blog post today claiming that he had the power to delete every photograph on Facebook. Before going public with a security flaw, the researcher contacted Facebook through their bug bounty program and collected $12,500 for his hard work. Facebook then fixed the flaw within two hours. So don't be afraid, it's fixed. According to Facebook, the security hole would only have allowed malicious hackers to delete photos that were public, which means all of our cover photos and profile pictures and any other photos you haven't locked down with Facebook's rather user-unfriendly privacy settings. Mark Stockley, writing in Naked Security, points out that Mathia could have made a lot more money by selling the vulnerability to the highest malicious bidder, but we're all glad that he didn't. Long live cute cat photos. And speaking of the long life of cat photos, today Facebook announced a new feature called the Legacy Contact that allows you to designate a close friend or family member to run your Facebook page after you die. You know, kind of like the person you put in your will to take care of your kids if you die. 
but this is so much more important. I'm just kidding. When I'm sad, I kid. It's how I cope. To designate a legacy contact, just go into your security settings and choose legacy. Then you have the option to send a message to that person or not in case you want it to be a surprise. Your legacy contact will be able to announce your death on their pay on your page, give information about memorial services and update your profile picture or cover photo. So let's hope that you trust them. You also have the option to have your Facebook page deleted after you die. And that's it for this very depressing edition of Tech News Tonight. Subscribe to the show on iTunes or YouTube. It's free. Just go to twit.tv slash TN2. You can also write to us at TN2 at twit.tv. And we hope that you do, no matter what you have to say. And as always, watch live every weekday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. And don't miss our morning news program, Tech News Today, every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Megan Maroney. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by Cashfly.com.